My name is Chloe, and this is the Feeder Flow Podcast, where you'll find authentic conversations on how to get your period back and restore your metabolism from years of disordered eating, low calorie diets, and excessive exercise regimes. No trendy diets of celery juice and broccoli sprouts will be found here. Rather, my mission is to teach you balance and how the foods you've most likely cut out of your diet are the very ones that are essential for health. It's time we stop fearing food and embrace all that it can do for us. Food freedom, vivacious health, and a monthly menstrual cycle is possible, and I'm going to show you how to achieve this type of wellness without obsession. In the fitness and health industry, I didn't really feel like there was a blend between aesthetic wellness and fitness. And so that was really a big part of my vision when I stopped was how do I blend the two and how do I get the body that I really want, but from a place of love, from a place of wholeness, nourishing my body, eating really healthy and full and still having the freedom and the space. And so as I slowly started to heal that relationship and really came into my own in that way, it cleared a lot of mountains for me that showed me other things that I just didn't have the space or the capacity to see. And so I started really looking at my relationship history and my late relationship patterns. I was ending up in one abusive relationship and the next, like multiple in the court system. And there was one abusive relationship in particular that ended in a pregnancy that I later found out was pre- that was intentional. And so when that happened, it, it just cracked me wide open and it really pointed to so many parts of myself that I hadn't yet looked at that were just crying for love and acknowledgement and attention. So I really and it often back. take us to get to that sort of breaking down point to have those sort of experiences. I mean it can go either way, but it is that sort of like momentous like thing that can either open us up into like bigger and greater just like self-growth or mm-hmm. it can just continue to drag us down. But it's really cool to hear that you really took the path of like, this is opening up something for me here. Yeah, yeah. You know, I I sometimes say like, I didn't have a choice, but we always do have a choice. I could have spiraled me, but I was already so invested in my personal growth journey that I had the tools and I had, I had what it, what it take, what it took for me to sit with that and to really surrender to that experience and to dive deeper. And so I started looking into my childhood trauma and realized that my whole childhood was filled with abuse that I had never really named. And I had never named it because I didn't really understand what trauma was. I thought that I had come from the perfect family and there was a lot of greatness with my family, but there was also a lot of darkness. And my experience was different than the other children that were in my family. And from there, I started to do a lot of different therapy and counseling and was like, I'm going to, I'm going to do this like this. I'm going to stop this pattern and this cycle that I'm in. And it wasn't until I started getting into a new relationship and into intimate relations that my body just locked up and my whole system would freeze and it revealed layers to this trauma that I just didn't have access to without someone really pressing up against it literally and figuratively. And so I ended up in the hands of a somatic sexologist and it just completely transformed the life that I was living and the way that I felt in my body, the way that I describe it is like, it was almost like I was watching myself in a movie all the time. Like I'd walk into any, you know, gathering or I would go to work or whatever I was doing. I was viewing myself from a bird's eye perspective. I wasn't actually living my life from my two eyes. I wasn't seeing things from inside of my body. It was like my soul was outside of myself. And from the somatic work that I did in the body work, it dropped me into my body. I had a huge sexual awakening and so much remembering came through. And within a matter of like six months, I was able to triple and quadruple my income. So I hit a six figure business within about, it was like six to eight months. Um, I I cleared a lot of those patterns. And that is so fascinating that you say that. I just have to interject here because I had the like very similar thing as well. It wasn't until I myself really, I know I've shared it on my show many times, just my um, experience with really being disconnected to uh, my sexuality and to just like to my yoni and to my womb space and all of that. And it wasn't until I started opening up and tapping into that sort of that power that I have and that we all have 
that everything in my business just all of a sudden immediately just changed. I remember like I, for the first time was able to have like pain-free sex for the first time in like my whole life. I was able to have pain-free sex and I opened myself up. I found a partner who was so loving, who allowed me to explore myself and express myself. And literally a week later, I got like 25 clients that signed up, like 25 one-on-one clients in the matter of just like two days. And it all just happened after that, like that opening that I had of like, oh my gosh, wait, I am abundant. And I do have so much like power and that life force is now just sort of like reawakened in me. A hundred percent. Oh, that's so incredible. And I love it. I see it all the time with clients. One of my somatic clients just did the exact same thing. She hit six figures within eight months and invested when she had like $300 in her bank account and just fast tracked her way there. So I think it's a huge testament to the body and a huge testament to our sexuality and how our sexuality is connected to our relationship with our power, with money, with our worthiness. And it's so incredibly tied to our receptivity, which is our feminine energy. So do you feel like doing your times of like being raw vegan and going on all these diets, you said you started dieting when you were like in middle school, that's insane. Um, and then also going through the bodybuilding, which if you guys go look at Julianne's uh, blog, she has a great sort of story um, that she shares and you'll see like she was full on competitor. Um, so during that time, do you feel like you were very disconnected with your body? Yeah, I think it's such a fascinating journey because everything had to do with my body and everything had to do with sex, but I didn't realize it until the end. Like everything had to do with the body, but I wasn't actually in my body. I was trying to work on my body rather than working with my body and in my body. And how many so, of us do that? We listen to all these rules of we should do this, should do that, shouldn't eat this, shouldn't eat that. And we never like turn it back in to be like, but what does my body want? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so to your question, was I disconnected? Yeah, completely. I was completely disconnected with my own intuitive signals with what my body actually really needed and wanted. And I don't think it was necessarily disconnection. Like I think at the end of the day, there are, there are a lot of us that are disconnected and there were certainly points where there was disconnection, but I truly think that it's, it's, it's us not listening. It's us not recognizing that we do hold the intuitive knowing that we do hold the keys to what is best for us through listening to the body, but it's also clouded and muddied with media and medical information and you know, the shoulds and the shouldn'ts of the ego and things that we hear or see that we just then block these signals that are so inherently there, that they're there, we just push them away. So it's kind of this dance between disconnection and ignoring and avoidance, because I didn't want to trust and because I truly just wanted this, this image of perfection that I thought was perfection. So I just pushed those pieces away. Mm. And so then you started working with a sexologist and what was that experience like? Yeah, it was powerful. Uh, it was, it was fast. It was six sessions within a nine day period. And usually it's done over a six to 12 week period. So I went in really fast and came out really fast. And the integration period was just incredible. I really learned about my feminine energy, about womanhood, about my womb, about relaxation, about letting go of control. And I really started to step into my own embodiment and also my own worth, like an embodied sense of worth and my own power. Mm -hmm. And I really learned a lot about the relationship between our masculine and our feminine energy, men and women, my relationship to men. And it just spiraled me into a beautiful healing deeper healing journey and into the work that I do today over the next like three years from that point and it's just it was a beautiful unfolding thanks for listening to this short clip from the feeder flow podcast to listen to the rest of the show head on over to your favorite podcast app like itunes or spotify if your period has gone mia you're gonna want to get her back She's important for your health and misses you dearly. I've created a juicy online course designed to teach you everything I wish I knew 
about getting my period back, restoring my metabolism, and cultivating a healthy, nourishing relationship with food. The Get Your Flow On course is designed to empower and inspire you to achieve full recovery. Head on over to www.flowwithclo.com to sign up.